I wanted to address this first thing on today's show so people aren't caught off guard later on. But this will be my last week here working at Chat Sports, and my last week as the host of Dolphins Today. I've thought about for years going and getting my master's in sports law and pursuing that field, and I feel like now is the right time for me to go and do that. And that has led to the very difficult decision for me to leave my job as Willie Fence. So my last live show is going to be on Thursday, and the last video you see from me on this channel will be on Sunday. I am so thankful for the unbelievable support that I've received from Dolphins fans on this channel. We've really become a family here on Dolphins today. It's been an unbelievable community, and again, I'm just so thankful for all of you. I'm going to have a lot more to say later on this week, but for now, thank you all. Dolphins fans, I still have a few more of those in me. Today we are sponsored by our good friends over at Kinzuri. If you go to Kinzuri.com slash chat, you're going to get an amazing deal on their height boosting shoes. We'll tell you more about that deal later on in today's show. On today's show, we're talking about some breakout candidates on the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to give you my top five guys that I think could break out for Miami this year. But first, I just want to break down my criteria. A breakout candidate cannot be a rookie. You can't break out in your rookie season, right? It cannot be a rookie. Also, it can't be a guy like Chosen Anderson that's been in the league for years and years. And we know that Chosen has already been a good player in this league. So it can't be a you know guy that's been in the league for a long time. And also, Tua Tungavailo is not on this list. You know why? Because he broke out last year. We know he's a top 10 quarterback in this league when healthy. He cannot be a breakout candidate this year. Can he be an MVP candidate? Yes, but not a breakout candidate. Who do you think is going to break out this season on the Dolphins? Go down in the comments section. Give me a name. Who is going to break out on the Fins this year? We begin with Cater Kohu. He is by far my number one breakout candidate because he had a really impressive rookie season for the Dolphins as a UDFA out of Texas A&M Commerce. This guy was not even supposed to make the team. He made the team and made a significant impact. Taking a look at the numbers here, 15 games played, 72 tackles, 10 fast breakups, got his first career interception in year one, had a PFF grade of 69.8 which was one of the highest grades given to a rookie corner. Cater was awesome as a rookie, and I think he was one of the unsung heroes on that playoff team because you look at the cornerback situation, Xavier Howard had a down year. Uh, you had guys get hurt. Brandon Jones, the safety position, went down. Nick Needham went down. Trill Williams went down. Cater Kohu stepped up and emerged as CB2 last year. He's probably going to be CB th CB3 this year, maybe the starting nickelback. But Cater Kohu, when you look at the numbers last year, when you look at Vic Fangio coming in, when you look at the role he's going to play this year, he could have a breakout season emerge as a really, really good cornerback in this league. Today's show is sponsored by Kinzuri. Fellas, do you ever wish you were a little bit taller Maybe you matched on Tinder, but a profile says must be over six feet. Maybe your date wants to wear heels, but she can't because it will make her taller than you. Well, I got the short kings covered with today's sponsor, Kinzuri. Kinzuri makes shoes that make you up to 2.8 inches taller without anyone knowing. Look, girls get heels, makeup, push-up bras. Why can't men get a confidence boost as well? We're all the same height lying down anyway, if you know what I mean. Kanzuri shoes are not only height boosting, but also stylish and comfortable. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes, but fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. The height insoles are integrated into the shoes, making it the ultimate height hack for a limited time. Only our listeners get an extra 15% off your order at Kanzuri.com slash chat. The site is already 30% off. With our link, you can get an extra 15%. So if you do the math, that's 45% off your entire order. Support our show and check them out. It's C-O-N-Z-U-R-I dot com slash chat. Life short. You don't have to be, though. It's time to level up the playing field, boys. Maybe upgrade that dating profile to six feet. Kinzuri is an absolute game changer when it comes to your dating life. 
And Jalen Phillips is an absolute game changer when it comes to this Dolphins defense. And I was kind of iffy about putting him as a breakout candidate on today's show because we already know how good this guy is. Taking a look at the numbers in his second season in 2022, this comes after he set the Dolphins' rookie sack record in 21. 61 tackles, 25 quarterback hits, 8 tackles for loss, 7 sacks for JP. Mike Masala of Dolphins Wire also has JP as a breakout candidate. Here's what Mike had to say. Phillips has had a strong two years since being drafted in the first round out of the U. He set the franchise's rookie record for sacks, eight and a half in 2021. He followed that up with a seven-sack campaign that saw him take a significant leap in snaps, significant leap in snaps from 6.03 in 2021 to 8.40 in 2022. Now entering his third season, he'll have a full offseason of picking Bradley Shield's brain for pass rush secrets, as well as months of coaching from new defensive coordinator Vic Fangio. Phillips in his first year in Fangio's system could be ready to set the league on fire. At 24 years old, he's already built like a Greek god, and he's going to use his combination of strength and speed to strike fear into opposing tackles. When you're looking at J.P., not only is he a breakout candidate, he could be a dark horse for Defensive Player of the Year. And I think he can be because of Vic Fangio, right? Look at the numbers from his first two years in the league. Now you add Vic Fangio to this coaching staff. He is going to be the play caller on defense. He's going to have J.P. even more involved as a pass rusher. You got Bradley Chubb there as well. Jalen Phillips, like Mike Masala said, could set this league on fire, have a monster season in 2023. The numbers got even better after an impressive rookie season in 2021. Numbers were even better in 2022. He could explode in 2023 when you're talking about his numbers. Be sure to subscribe. Also, turn on your notifications because we'll continue to have you covered with Dolphins news and rumors. I'm really hoping Dalvin Cook signs this week before I leave. Can you imagine, Producer Coop? How about that as a farewell? Dolphins Twitter has been buzzing today, by the way, about all this Dalvin Cook stuff. I don't know what's going on. When there's smoke, there's fire, so we'll see. We'll probably go live if Dalvin Cook signs this week, so be sure to subscribe, turn on those notice so you know when we put out videos and you know when we go live. Durham Smythe is my next breakout candidate here. Barely met the criteria because he is entering his sixth season in the NFL, but his first season as tight end one, and that is why he is a breakout candidate for me. You look at this tight end room right now, it is clear that he is Tua Tungavailoa's top option at this position. You signed Eric Sauber, you signed Tyler Croft, Tanner Connors coming back for year two. I expect him to make this roster. Elijah Higgins, you drafted him. But he hasn't played tight end before. He's making that transition. And then Julian Hill, view DFA out of Campbell. After all these years, Smythe is finally getting his shot as the first tight end. And I believe they, this coaching staff has a lot of confidence in Durham Smythe because they gave him an extension. He was, he was supposed to be a free agent after this next year. They extend him. They want to give him a shot to be the first tight end. And he might fit Mike McDaniel's scheme a little bit more as a tight end because he can block better than Mike Kosicki. We'll see. I know a lot of us really wanted the Dolphins to draft Darnell Washington, uh, maybe sign you know, a tight end in free agency like Dalton Schultz, but they want to give Durham Smythe a shot. I think he deserves this shot. What's your confidence level in Durham Smythe for this upcoming season? Scale it 1 to 10 down in the comment section. Brandon Jones is number four on my list here for breakout candidates. As you all know, I'm a big fan of this guy, the third round pick out of Producer Coop's uh, Texas Longhorns in 2020. He's entering his third NFL season. That's when a lot of guys break out in their third season. He tore his ACL in week seven last year. That was disappointing because he was having a pretty solid season. He's expected to be fully healthy by the start of this upcoming season. I'm a big fan of Brandon Jones, man, and I know a lot of us wanted to sign Jordan Poyer, but my argument for not signing Poyer was Brandon Jones. You have a really good safety room right now without Poyer. The Dolphins instead signed to Sean Elliott. He's expected to be the third safety, but having Javon Holland and Brandon Jones, your safety uh, tandem, that's one of the best duos in the league at that position then you have to Sean Elliott. So 
I think Brandon Jones is in for a big year. He's back healthy. He's hungry. He's got Vic Fangio as his play caller. I think that's the argument for a lot of these guys breaking out on defense as Vic Fangio. I expect a lot from Brandon Jones this upcoming season. And then Austin Jackson who some of y'all have called me out for being a little bit critical on, for saying I don't think he's going to start over Isaiah Wynn. But A.J., if he starts at right tackle, could have a really big year at that position. Could be a pleasant surprise. You look at this transformation from A.J. He looks to be in phenomenal shape, and this is after he missed a heavy majority of last season with injuries. He's back. He's healthy. He looks to be in good shape. I'm excited to see what he can do. And like I said, I think he could be a pleasant surprise. Let's say they decide to start when at left guard, AJ at right tackle. That is a possibility, maybe a strong possibility at this point. And AJ is to a tongue of Iloa's blindside protector, steps up to the plate, has a big year. Uh, that's going to change what we've seen from this Dolphins offensive line for years now. This Dolphins offensive line could be really, really good. And I think it starts with Austin Jackson. He could be a pleasant surprise this season. He looked good last offseason, and in limited time last year looked pretty decent. I think A.J., if he's able to beat out Isaiah Wynn, uh, could certainly be a pleasant surprise on the Finns this year. Show A.J. some love. I'm excited to see what he can do this year. Excited to see what he can do at camp next month. Type 73 down in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe. Again, last live show from me will be on Thursday. Last video you see from me on this channel will be on Sunday.